You're listening to Cards to the Moon, a podcast about trading cards from both a collector and investor perspective. We hope you'll stick around for the ride as we take a deep dive into the state of the hobby, share some hot takes, hopefully some useful advice and fun stories along the way. Hey guys, welcome back to Cards to the Moon. This is episode 198, and my name is Clark from 5cardguys.com and 5cardguys on Instagram. Co-hosting with me, as usual, is Hyung of Integrity Sports Cards and John, who is Trade You at Recess, both on IG as well. All right, off the top today, it looks like Panini America is still in the hobby game as they recently signed Caitlin Clark to an exclusive trading card and memorabilia deal. And if you don't know who Caitlin Clark is, she just broke the all-time leading NCAA college basketball scoring record for both men and women. So that's quite the accomplishment. And, and you know, I've heard some people say she's the female Steph Curry because of her long-distance shooting ability. Anyway, Panini just signed her. And since Panini still has the WNBA license, they're losing everything else, but they still got the WNBA license. Uh, once Caitlin gets drafted, uh, we can probably expect a rookie auto card pretty soon in her official WNBA uniform, whichever team drafts her, right? So two questions for you guys. What do you think about this move by Panini? And the second one, do you think Caitlin Clark rookie autos will have any value? So like I said, it's it's treading water. It's doing what it needs to do to survive right now. I think mm-hmm. stuff like partnerships like with Monopoly, for instance, we talked about our last episode. It's like those are necessary partnerships that they need to keep um, keep for relevance right now, right? Mm-hmm. They They really don't. Uh, have a long-term strategy with any of these, I think, in my opinion. Um, if you look at, you know, what Fanatics does, like their moves that they make, very strategic. Um, they have purpose if there's a partnership, but it feels like Panini, um, I mean, it, it is what it is. They're, they're getting whatever leftover is available at this point to, to stay relevant. And you know what? It's not a bad deal, I don't think, because, you know, there, uh, there was a card, um, a WNBA card, uh, I think it was Sabrina Ionescu's, like black mm-hmm. gold prism PSA 10 that sold for 10,800, I think. So mm-hmm. I think that previous sale definitely kind of, uh, sparked something that there's potential. And if you break it down to who K- Kate and Clark is at the end of the day, she's, you know, uh, one of the most watched, uh, collegiate athletes like they I think uh, on her game that time it was like four and a half million uh, views which is pretty impressive at the end of the day so there's definitely a lot of eyes on her and that's to answer your se- second question will they have some value I absolutely I think they will have value but like I said are you guys gonna rip any WNBA or plan to purchase any WNBA slabs anytime soon Probably answer is probably not, just knowing from your guys' collectability. So how many people are in that kind of like market for that? So to me, it's like it is it is a nice niche market that I think Panini, um, it's good for Panini. I don't think it's it's bad, but at the same time, I don't think it's it's going to boom like people think that it's going to boom or Hope yeah, that it's right. going to boom. Yeah, I get it. I'm a, I think I'm a little bit more bullish. I think Caitlin Clark is transcending just women's basketball. She is catapulting. There's no question she, is catap- she has catapulted women's college basketball into like mainstream sports. Like I, I'm, I'm fairly certain most people watched Iowa's run with Caitlin Clark last year over March Madness, men's March Madness, and I'm I'm sure even this year might might yeah. even be the same to be honest. Um, so is this move like I mean, these companies, not just Panini, I'm sure they are racing to get her. So Panini being the first to to sign her, huge. Like I don't know if I know there's a Nike ad. I don't know if Nike has signed her, but I'm I'm assuming they are going after her hard if they haven't already. So any big company out there, I think they are going after this girl hard for for very good reason and i think this is a huge move for panini you know like they're um 
they're not in a great the greatest situation hobby wise and in the industry but you know this opportunity for them they can create way more product it doesn't have to be just panini prism anymore i think i i honest maybe i'm i don't know if i'm the minority thinking this but i think there's gonna be big interest in you know wmba national treasures wmba flawless you know seeing the first um logo man caitlin clark i think people would be all over that and so panini is you know they're drooling over the opportunity to release you know instead of just one wmba product release five six seven eight nine ten and still have people buy it because just because of caitlin clark so it's a huge move i think once the you know I'm still a little skeptical how strong like the WNBA brand would be versus the college brand. I think the college brand clearly has taken off and way stronger. You know, yeah. the yeah. Bowman first, which is Caitlin Clark. Like I think, you know, I, I think that works well in WNBA. Maybe, maybe not. She might start to get a little bit lost in the shuffle. Who knows? Or she might be LeBron James and, and even completely do- dominate the WNBA, which then I think she would be back in the, the big spotlight. So the fact that it would be an official rookie auto um, on card, not sticker, I think that would be big too. So, uh, both in both ways, I think there's going to be value. So, Kate, yeah, I'm I'm actually big yeah. on Caitlin Clark. I would love to have one of her autograph rookie cards. Spoken like a true dad of three girls, <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I hear you. Caitlin Clark definitely transcends sport. Like I, you know, I'm I have the least interest in. A college sports. I know some of our American friends are gonna, you know, get upset by that, but I, I don't get the college sport fever. Uh, if anyone gets it, probably oh, Young does, because you know you played in the states and and uh, you know Americans love their sports, starting from uh, from the college level. I right? love college so, basketball. I've been watching it yeah, since I was like college 18, basketball, 19. Of course. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. Best. Yeah, but you know when you graduate from the college level to like the WNBA, like I, I I'm with you. I don't think the brand is that strong to tell you the truth and no. and uh it still has a lot of you know a lot more to grow i think um that being said you know there are certain players like like every sports fan would probably recognize at the very least i think caitlin clark falls into that bucket and even at with sports card collectors you know they'll know who caitlin clark is like right. she'll be the chase of any set that has her card in it you know and and so so but at the at the end of the day, going back to the question of whether it was a smart move by Panini, I think it's a an amazing move by Panini. For like sure. you know, we talked about Live Golf, um, them partnering with them, you know, and what that meant for Panini. I think the same holds true that you know they're just increasing their. I don't know if they were hypothetically looking to sell down the road, this would just increase their value right. as a as a brand, right? They're like, oh, we got a partnership with Live Golf, we got an exclusive deal with Caitlin Clark. You know, maybe that's their play down the road. They're like, uh, we're going to probably have to sell anyways, you know, and, Mm -hmm. but let's, let's like increase our, you know, um, brand value before we do and try to get as much money as possible. So I don't know. Maybe that's their play, but I think it's a good move by Panini and, and, um, yeah, Caitlin Clark, like the, the rookie autos will be no doubt a big chase. I'm sure we'll hear about it. Um, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see what the sales go for. Um, but, but yeah, I think for the long term, I'm not, I'm not so sure, you know, other than Caitlin Clark, just, just, um, anything else WNBA related. It's just like, you know, you're, you're mentioning Sabrina Ionescu. Um, and, uh, yeah, you're right. Her black gold prism, which is numbered to five, sold for almost 11,000. And it was a PSA 10. And that was a non auto. So if that's any gauge, and that was sold last year. So it's a very recent sale. So if that's any gauge, yeah, this, it's a, the Caitlin Clark rookie auto uh, rare parallels. It's a five figure card right off the bat, yeah. you know. So that's that's kind of your you know your um, guide price right there. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But um, you know, if I if I was ripping open a WNBA pack and I pulled a Caitlin Clark, I probably sell right away. To tell you the truth, yeah. you know, flip and then uh, you know what? To be fair. If I hit a Connor Bedard Young Guns, I would do the same thing. I would sell and, <laughs> and flip. So just feed on the hype. That's that's kind of the play for me. You would trade it in for a hobby box. Stop lying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we talked to. If you didn't hear the Friday episode, listen to that. And then yes, I'll be like that guy who just tries to tries to gamble until until you lose at the end. <laughs> 
All right, let's move on to hobby headlines. Okay, so since the hobby boom of early 2021, we've only seen prices coming back down, right? Just settling to where we, you know, we probably think it should be. And if you look at all the card ladder indexes, regardless of sport and even in non-sport categories, it was just a sea of red arrows pointing downward, right? But if you look, and I, I just checked recently, but if you look at the card ladder index since the beginning of this year, right, for the first two months, we're actually starting to see some of the indexes trending upward. And, you know, the CL50 index, for example, which takes 50 hand-selected cards by card ladder that they think best represents the card market. So it includes iconic cards like the 1952 Topps Mantle, um, all the way up to the 2018 Silver Prism, Luka Doncic, right? So they aggregate that data and, and that CL50 index has gone up nearly 8% since the beginning of 2024, okay? And just to give you a little more context, the baseball index is up 1.73%. So it's not a lot, but it's still up. Hockey's up 2.13%. Football's up 0.8%. And basketball's up 0.31%. And basketball's been losing a lot of money over the last couple of years. So it's finally kind of trending back up, even though it's only 0.31%. So my big question and kind of our discussion for hobby headlines is, do you think this is the beginning of a trend, right? Or in other words, are we finally turning the corner on the sports card market in 2024? Or do you think this is just a little blip and things still have room to go down further? What do you think? Um... I do see it like a, a positive thing that, you know, you see, I guess, green arrows in this, this time. Yeah. Uh, and, but at the end of the day, I do believe that there's some room to go down still on a lot of the stuff. I just believe that, um, and stuff like Bitcoin, I think definitely mm-hmm. has helped. You know, with those numbers, you know, some people cashing out and kind of moving money over whatever they think it's a better investment. And I think it comes down to um, spending, like spending money. How much available is it to the marketplace? And part of the growth can come from, you know, f- even stuff like fanatics, you know, increasing the hobby like in terms of awareness. So a lot more people just come into sure. the hobby. Uh, but like the stuff that is going down, I think we expected it. A lot of the, a lot of the stuff was hyped up to begin with, like WWE and stuff. Uh, mm, those yep. sets Marvel. we said, uh, yeah, we're like UFC, like there, there's a, even F1. There was, there's things that had to come down, I guess. So I think it's just inevitable that we would see this price change. But uh, for baseball to kind of stay there and hockey to be in the green as well, it's kind of like what we projected. I think it's it's based off the hype of guys like Connor Bedard that the sport is still exciting. There's a lot of players that are keeping the hype of the hobby alive. Um, and it gives reason for us to rip at the end of the day because if, if it's every year, you know, the same old like – there's not really great rookies where it's it's game changing, and I I think Major League Baseball also incentivized. I think there was a uh, because there's something to do with prospects bringing prospects up a little later, but I think there's more incentive for M- MLB teams to bring prospects up, for instance. So I think there's okay. a lot more hype around the game, especially in the card market, because of these little minor changes that like these entities like MLB are creating right so Hmm. yeah I think um, there's a bunch of factors but I don't think it's like a bullish sign like oh the hobbies I think we're just still in a recorrection phase of you know there's a lot of junk slab that wasn't worth it so you're gonna see you know stuff like that continue to tumble I think low-end cards in general there's really no value other than you know people who want to collect so I think there's gonna be a tumble in there because we're ripping every day uh, and those cards are worthless at the end of the day, right? So, um, and yeah. there's more of it. They're printing more of it every year, obviously. Uh, there's more sets. Um, so I think there's a lot of stuff that are, are going to come down. But at the same time, there are buying opportunities for 
everything, right? There's price points where I think, hey, it's a good buying opportunity right now, or, you know, I wouldn't touch this with, you know, with a stick. So, well, you got to be a Debbie Downer. Oh, man. I was hoping that. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, it's not that I'm. Hearts to the I'm, moon. It's good. It's it, it is good. The market's good. we have a lot of green, but I think there was a lot of down coming from it. So we're just it has to go up somewhat. We've been on the down market for so long. <laughs> I finally was thinking that our podcast title makes sense. You know, cards to the moon. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, good points, uh, Johnny. What are your thoughts? I think I think most of what Hyung says is is I I think I agree with that the most. You know, um yeah. as the economy recovers in the next, you know, what they're predicting the next you know, eighteen to twenty four months, I think you're gonna see mm-hmm. recovery um in different levels in things like sports cars and alternate investments. And we talked about this like way early on, how there is parallels between Ethereum and Bitcoin and you know, the card market. Now the card market has changed a bit since then because I think back then we even had actual straight investors that don't really care about the cards, but they're in right. it because the money is so great. And those a lot of those have since left. So but what you what we're left with right now are are a lot of you know, there's a lot of young dads and young kids and they're they're into modern investing, which is cryptocurrencies and, and NFTs and th- things like that. And so there should be uh, um, some sort of correlation, right? As Bitcoin and Ethereum has been popping off recently, I'm sure you will see recovery in uh, sports car prices, in Rolex prices, in rare wine bottles and art and stuff like that. I'm sure there will be some correlation in all of those sort of alternative, you know, if, if we want to call them assets at this point. So, yeah. you know, whether this is a blip or not, I don't think this is a blip. I think, you know, we all know, we all recognize that the sports card hobby is strong. It's huge. You know, it's it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Now, we did, mm-hmm. we did um, caution <laughs> if these companies screw it up and legitimately create Junk Wax 2.0, it could explode in our faces. That's a possibility. But assuming these companies do it right, and they 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 play this um, supply demand game very carefully as as we move up together, I think it, it should be fine. Now bullish run, maybe not, but in terms of recovery and and just solid gains in the next twenty four months, I could I could definitely see that. Yeah, um, you know I, I generally agree with you guys. I'm maybe a little more bullish than you guys, um, but. Uh, and maybe that's just wishful thinking, but um, it's good to see, you know, um, s- some of these trends go back up. And I think I do agree with you, Hyung and John. Both of you guys mentioned that it's, it's not just one factor that's driving these numbers. There's a multiple amount of factors, right? And and I do think, you know, part of it really is like the fanatics marketing side of things. We've talked that, about that extensively in past podcast episodes. So I feel like that's helping. And I feel like that can only help drive up things further um, down the road, right? As the more um, marketing budget they put into, you know, um, increasing the presence of the hobby, uh, I feel like that'll help getting, you know, other new collectors into the space. And and so, yeah, I don't think it's going to be like 2024, we're going to go back up to 2021 numbers. You know, it's going to be more of a gradual increase. And, and you know, one of the things that kind of stuck out to me, I sent you guys like before we um, went on the air um, a screenshot of the all the indexes that car ladder keeps track of and it's way more than half that are trending upwards so it's not just one index you know it includes the four major sports that I uh, they mentioned but it also includes like uh, Star Wars is up almost two percent um, the modern index so modern cards are up 1.2 percent you know that saw a huge crash since 2021 um, tennis. Um, golf all up you know what I mean so it's a good general trend to see you know and and the one that's up the most is um, an index they call culture 51 it's it's by zero cool if you guys remember that company they've been kind of out of the news lately but um, zero cool put a card index of like just pop culture stuff and they call it culture 51 I'm assuming there's 51 cards in this index and it's up over 20% since January of this year 
And a lot of those cards include Star Wars, um, celebrity cards, and uh, yeah. So, so you know, even non-sports is, seems to be doing really, really well um, right now. On the flip side, though, maybe we'll talk about this too a bit. The ones that are still going down are Marvel, which is down 9% since the beginning of the year. And that's been kind of bleeding even since 2023. So that's interesting to see. UFC is down uh, over 5%. You got Ultra Modern, which is minus 0.57%. So that's balancing out too. Uh, Pokemon, minus 1.49%. And Magic's 1.57%. And it's interesting because our, our you know friend Roy, he collects Pokemon cards and... I went to his house the other day to drop off some of my uh, Pokemon cards or my son's Pokemon cards so that he could submit it to PSA. And we're just talking about how it looks like in the TCG world, they kind of lag behind the sports card world by a few months, mm-hmm. like the trends. So it's, it's interesting to see all these TCG cards. You're seeing this downward trend. But then if, if this is of any indication, we should see it kind of rebound and go back up in a few months down the road. So th- there could be a play there. But anyway... Your thoughts on some of the indexes that I mentioned that are seeing a negative trend right now still. Any thoughts on that? Like I said before, it's it's um, it's what happened, I think, initially. We, we asked, okay, what do you guys think about like UFC? What do you guys think about F1? What do you think about WWE? And uh, when it releases, it's like there's this enormous hype. Right, just like how we see in the hobby with Wemby, you see it with Bedard. There's going to be a, a correction to that. So I think we're in that middle, really. We're right in that middle of that correction of, yeah, you're going to see those things that do they still have hold value to that community? Do they still see it as value or was it emotional? And most of the time, there's going to be a point in time it was emotional and, you know, those are the times when you sell and then, you know, the market kind of tumbles and then you kind of say, okay, this is the floor or whatever it is. You'll see a good buying opportunity. And I think that's what we're seeing within the, I guess, the micro scale of kind of these trends of pricing going up and down, especially in, in times of economic downturn. It's like the real value cards will hold its value, if that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Yep, for sure. Yeah, I'm with Young. I'm looking at that uh, chart that you sent us with the little, the green yeah. and red, and yeah, it's, I think it it it's very clear when you look at this and you look at the names that are in red and the names are in green. Um, the ones in the green are mostly the things that went up during the boom, 2021, right? You yeah. know, early 2022, and when that started to correct, a lot of people got a little bit scared. So they moved some of that. They moved away from prism and they moved away from basketball. They started putting it to hockey. And when hockey started to correct, they moved that away and started putting it to Star Wars and F1 and, and alternative sports. And right now you're, you're pretty much seeing the last in the red are the ones that were last hot, <laughs> you know. Right. Uh, up and up until about twelve months ago, so I think Young's right. I think he nailed it. It's it's just this its own little. We're all, we're looking at numbers of the own, you know, the small, uh, what's like small economy or this the small, you know, the the, mm-hmm. the microeconomics within the hobby, and you're just seeing the cor- the correction. It's not really an indication of you know where sports cars is as a whole, but I think just some of these little corrections are are happening based off of what happened in the last twelve months. So. Yeah, I think Hyung Hyung nailed it. Yeah, yeah. I wonder um, what other people think about this. You know, if I feel like we've been in the, you know, like I've been doing a lot of IG reels, and then there's always seeing this downtrend. So um, I wonder how that's going to do for my traffic because I always joke. Like I've been on a, a couple other podcasts, and you know, by and large, most people like those IG reels because they think it's informative. And, you know, um, I was just joking where occasionally I put an IG reel where I show a card that's been increasing in value despite the economic situation. And and those those reels never do well in terms of tra- <laughs> like numbers. Like people don't want to see that, you know, <laughs> whereas like the sudden drops, people are like, yeah, it's just the algorithm loves that stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and just and those people love to there's see all that. The- there's always that one person who's like, calling out the person who bought at the peak <laughs> yeah yeah i'd hate to be that like, guy 
And I kind of feel bad. I'm like, if that person was seeing that post, like, hey, yeah, you know, why, why are you kicking them when they're all done something like that, right? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Bought at the peak, oh for sure. <laughs> you haven't been, you haven't been in the hobby long enough. If you yeah, haven't bought you at the can't peak. call yourself a hobbyist if you didn't buy from the peak. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the badge of honor. Yeah, that you know you're part of the hobby community if you <laughs> if you bought at the peak. Um. But yeah, it's interesting to see how all this plays out too for the rest of the year. So, uh, but I'm glad you know the start of 2024, uh, we're starting on the on a good footing, and um, and uh, we'll see how things proceed um, for the rest of the year. So, with that, let's move on. Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation, the ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the icon of vacations. Icon of the seas. Arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry Bahamas. On to our next segment. We're calling Would You Rather? All right, so this segment, we've done it a couple times before, but I'm going to give you guys a couple of hobby scenarios hobby related scenarios and then you tell me which you know which one would you choose okay so all right let me just start with this first one um and we talked about it in the friday episode with the uh, um the connor bedard and just the mania that's going on there and i i was going to bring it up then but I, I knew that i had to save for, for this segment so i'm going to ask it right now would you rather spend a thousand dollars on three boxes of upper deck hobby box <laughs> Or one base Connor Bedard Young Guns card. Which one would you do? One hobby box. (laughs) I would do one hobby box, guys. No, like that guy, like that one Um, guy. Okay, yeah, we got to get off. I'm making it more fair. I'm a, I'm a reputable sports card shop owner. Okay, I'm giving you this option. I'm a more fair deal. Three boxes or one base Bedard Young Guns. I'm taking the three boxes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take three boxes. I'm, I like the odds better than one box. So, like, I don't think it's a bad move, but like, yeah, if, if you enjoy ripping and you think you could pull another Connor, it's like hitting a cherry on a slot machine and get the free spin Gambler. again for all you gamblers. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So wait, let's go with the three boxes. Three boxes. Um, how many boxes in a case? Twelve. Yes. I think when I ripped, I remember I did an upper deck rip with a bunch of the guys. Um, you guys bought a case? I think we bought a half case. It was probably like you six went to eight boxes. Cole Caulfield six and Zegris uh, chasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, oh, yeah. I think we you had like, hit. we had nine boxes. We hit one Zegris, one Caulfield. So, you know, if uh, hockey people know Young Guns isn't printed like it is Topps Chrome or Prism, you're not getting, you know, like a Bedard Young Guns in every, you know, one in every other box minimum. Yeah, it's you know. a tough hit. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's a lot tougher. It's printed a lot less than your your standard base, car, modern base cards. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how it is with Bedard. Like, again, we, we maybe they print it to the moon this time. Um, but generally, you're probably looking at a Bedard, you know, or a, a hot Young Guns player. One in like f- four to six boxes, I think. Someone could come, you know, somebody with okay. real ripping knowledge and experience can correct me on that. But that's from my experience. And I, I even remember this from when, you know, back in the day, ripping Crosby Young Guns. Like, you know, I, I attempted, I think, at least two, three boxes. And my friends, we all bought maybe nine boxes or eight boxes. No, <laughs> no Crosby in any of those boxes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And you know, that's why you end up with like a PSA 10 of under a thousand and, and what, whatever is McDavid's like 2000 uh, pop count of 2000. So um, I still think three boxes is probably a fairly decent chance. So <laughs> I, I, to, you know, to, have a, to have a little, to have a little fun and, you know, you, probably like a 50% chance of hitting a Bedard. I, mean, I like the, the side of John. I like the side of John. Yeah, this is the go. risky John. The, the, the balls to the wall, John. <laughs> yeah, love it. Hey, the, the the one million bounty is still out there. So, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, there you go. Okay. Well, if the if the one of one is off the table, like someone pulled it, 
would you that change your answer? No, I think I still need a three box. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. Um, all right, it's gonna be a three box sweep. You know, I'm not a huge fan of like this glorified base young guns card. Like I, I just I always think young guns is a glorified base card. So uh, I'm going for like the numbered cards or you know the the outburst or yeah all the. High hits. Probably, you know, with my luck, I probably end up with nothing. I should have probably kept the one <laughs> Young Guns base, but it would be fun while it lasted. All right. Second, would you rather question? Would you rather sell a card at a hundred dollar profit, or would you buy a card at a hundred dollar discount? Would you rather sell a card for a hundred dollar profit? Or get a deal a hundred. I'd rather sell a card for a hundred dollar profit. Mm, okay. Yeah, cash, ca- cash it in. I'll rely on the other card, buy it regular price to grow in value. So I'll get the hundred when I cash it on that card. Okay. And and the you know just before John answers, like I want to like you know in real life, like what would make you happier? You know what I mean? Like mm. oh, I got a good deal, hundred bucks off. You know, like I know. Um, the next booth is selling it for, you know, regular retail comps, but this guy doesn't know what he's doing about it. I got to get, you know. Yeah, no, or, profit. Yeah, so, profit. Definitely okay, profit. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm trying to think, because the natural answer is just the hundred bucks. I'd rather just make the hundred bucks, like sell. I'm trying to think mm-hmm. what would make me like happier. If there was like, a, you know, happened to be a grail card, that's for 200 bucks and the guy was selling it for 100 bucks at the show yeah t- give me the 100 dollars off i think in mm. any other scenario i, I probably selling it at a 100 dollars profit is is pretty nice but yeah you know what give me the give me the 100 i'll go the other way give me the 100 dollars off okay i'll go the collector mindset <laughs> um for me i get a thrill for selling cards so i'm going to go with the 100 dollars profit but so i'm with young but if we increase the stakes, would that change, right? So let's Thousand? say, you know, you you were looking for a Connor, but uh, let's say Connor McDavid PSA ten Young Guns. Yeah. It's, you know, regular price of three thousand, but some guy's selling it for two thousand. <laughs> would that make you like, woo? You know, I, I you know I I'd rather have that card knowing that I'm getting a thousand dollars off the regular comp, or you know, you bought it for two thousand, and then it's like let's cash out three thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Would that make a difference or no? I guess it's it's like do you think the glass is half full or half empty at the end of the day? <laughs> right. I I I, I, I like <laughs> I I like I like the glass full always. I mm. like offense. I don't like playing defense, especially in sports. It's like I'm a big the best defense is a strong offense type guy. Yeah. So I'm going to say get with the profit and then go reinvest that profit again and repeat the process. Fair enough. <laughs> this is tough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to think because, you know, the thrill of, you know, a lot of that thrill is, is gone nowadays, but the thrill of <laughs> um, bidding on a card that you really, yeah. really want and it's coming down to the wire and you get it for way cheaper than you're expecting and you're super excited and you get that like yeah. you know you get that adrenaline rush it's a great feeling yeah. but <laughs> but i don't have experience the other way around where my card is listed and people are just overbidding on it like so it's going to the moon mm. um i would imagine that's pretty it's pretty thrilling as well <laughs> um one day you'll have that feeling, yeah. hopefully. I, I think I think 90% of me is on your guys' side. Like selling yeah. is is a much better feeling. But that that offhand again, collector mindset, the one time you find that grail card, like the one you've been looking for for like forever, and it's available, kind of like uh Will talking about it's DeMar yeah. DeRozan Gold Refractor, and it's available and you get it for super cheap. I think that one instance, a specific example, I'll I'll take that over the rest. Okay, you know what? If I increase it to a thousand bucks, I think I would be the same. Like I will get, I would be thrilled to have a wicked deal like that. You yeah, know, yeah, I'm yeah. always looking for deals, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna change my mind if it, <laughs> when it comes down to a thousand buck profit or a thousand buck discount. Okay, third question: Would you rather have a card graded a PSA nine with the OC modifier 
qualifier, sorry. So off centered. Yeah. Or a PSA 8.5 of that same card. Straight up 8.5? Straight up. Oh, straight up oh, 8.5. Oh, yeah. No doubt. 8.5. Not even really? a question. I would, I would okay, consider. Okay, oh, no, that's too easy. PSA 8 then. Let's go to 8. I would go PSA 8 too. I, I value a OC 9 like way lower. I don't even know what people value. I, I remember there was like a like a consensus of what it would grade if you didn't get the OC, like, mm-hmm. and what that would be. But I think an eight is still a strong grade. I think it, it should be in the sixes or fives. Then that might be my kind of like, uh, I would even probably take a PSA seven over a nine OC. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. This, this one's easy. And, but it, it all depends too on the era of type of card. Like would that apply to a Gretzky versus a modern card? I don't think. Like I would want a PSA seven, but at the same time, a nine OC on a modern card is pretty bad as well. So, uh, okay. but I think it matters more on like a vintage card, uh, like or even like Gretzky era type, uh, seventy nine OPG. They don't so even. So if it was a vintage, they don't even do OC oh. on like modern cards, do they? I don't think. It's no, only I, don't on think I think. It's rare. Yeah, it's yeah I mean, rare. you can you can just ask for it because I think it's an option. What do you guys okay. know? What a uh, side side question before you get Clark you ask yours. I remember seeing yeah. so there's MC which is miscut, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing M. And maybe I'm wrong. I could have sworn I've, I've seen MK. Do you guys know what that is? Or am I just making that up? Ooh, no, it sounds familiar. But I don't that know does what sound is. familiar. Yeah. I could have sworn I've seen that. I remember asking myself like, well, I wonder what that is. MK is um, cards with a marking, a pen oh, or a pencil. Right, oh, right. marking. Okay. Gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Clark, I would. I would Clark, go. Clark, yeah. Clark. Like, you go for the straight number. Yeah. Lower straight, number, straight, straight number. number for sure. Okay. Yeah. I feel like people were. Maybe again. Maybe I. <laughs> I'm imagining it, but I think I could have sworn people were saying maybe like minimum two grades lower. It's like an OC nine would be the same value as like a PSA seven or something yeah. like that. Right. Maybe even worse. So if it was a PSA seven, because you're, you're completely. You're completely removing an entire category, right? Right. So what would you choose yeah. then? Nine or uh, OC or uh, seven? I, I think <laughs> I, I think I'm picking the number. Okay. And, and I think more than the value, uh, from a collector standpoint, I get you see the number nine, so it, it looks great. But man, if you see an OC nine or whatever, it <laughs> man, it looks... Because your OC nine is like usually on a card that's really off-center, where yeah. you don't barely even see the, the right or left border. Period. <laughs> right. And that that's pretty, I don't know, that's pretty ugly as a collector. It's pretty ugly to look at. So give, give me the seven. Okay. Uh, you guys convinced me. Seven it is. <laughs> I was going to go a nine OC, but <laughs> <laughs> you guys convinced me. All right. A uh, couple more. Would you rather, okay, these last two are kind of, uh, I asked ChatGPT, okay? So they might be a little off, right? So um, would you rather collect cards of your one favorite sport? For the rest of your life, okay? You got to choose one favorite sport. And that's that you can only collect those cards for the rest of your life. Or would you rather be able to collect multiple sports, right? But you can't collect the one favorite sport that you have. Oh, easy one for me. Oh, I'm a baseball lifer. I love (laughs) baseball cards more than anything. Mm -hmm. Baseball cards for sure. Okay. You miss out on Luka Doncic Chase. Have all the Lukas. uh, have all the Mahomes. They're good. I'll, I'll feast on Bowman Can't go Crohn's. chasing those? Okay. Nah. All you need is the first Bowmans. Fair enough. I, I, I'm going the other way, and I'll pick the other sports. Although, uh, baseball is also at the top yep. for me. Um, although, you know, like I technically I'm, I'm way more of a hockey fan, but... You know, us old, anyone who grew up yeah, in the yeah. junk wax era, baseball has a special place in baseball your Baseball cards. Um, by default, yep. yeah. But I would take the other ones for sure. But as I'm collecting, I'll be very, very sad <laughs> that I don't get to collect baseball. <laughs> and I'll be very jealous, very jealous of Young and Clark <laughs> that they have baseball, Clark, baseball cards. Yeah, I, this is a hard one because, I, I, you know, I've grown to really enjoy collecting basketball cards now, you know, and... Um, I'm not really into football yet, but, you know, I, I generally in life appreciate diversity <laughs> and choice. So this will be hard, but I'm, I'm with young baseball. just kind of rules the day for me. So, yeah. um, 
I'm. I saw that coming. Young and I will just be ripping Bowman Chrome year All after day. year. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, last one. Would you rather? This one kind of, is kind of for John, but would you rather display your sports card collection in a like a dedicated room with custom shelves, lighting, you know, or would you just want to keep it stored safely in binders or in boxes in a case, Zion case? What would you prefer? I'll go first then. <laughs> um, I would definitely rather display it. Oh, really? Okay. Out of, out of the out of the risk of security and uh, a very upset wife. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd I'd rather I'd rather display it in the house than keep it in a box, for sure. Interesting. You know, I thought you would go the other way because I know you like keeping things in really good condition. So if you had a lot tip of tip top, can yeah, <laughs> that's true. I. I I think I'd be like a young and it'd probably be in the basement and not near a window where it could uh, lose color right. over time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm usually a display guy, but I think I've come to appreciate storing things and then pulling them out like a year later, two years later and just like appreciate yeah, just looking, looking at, at them. them. Yeah. There's something about that. Yeah, that, that and is then it's too. like obviously the safety of kind of like where your mind's at, you it's in the safe, it's locked up. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. And I like displaying car that's what I've I've been doing even in my studio. It's like I'm like, ah, oh, this right. is kind of too big of a card to display. You know what, I'm gonna pack this one in the safe and then I start liking like I was going through my cards. I have a Project 70 Ronald Acuna. I'm like, mm. this card's so sick. These are the perfect cards to display, in my opinion, right? And then the valuable yeah. ones I kind of lock up, you know, and kind of just enjoy when, you know, I want to, you know, see yeah. those cards and then open it. Yeah. So what are you choosing? <laughs> I'm going to say store. Yeah. Store. Yeah. Oh, store. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Wow, this is, I, I didn't I didn't think this question would go this way. I yeah, because I, I well because my studio I have it displayed. Yeah, yeah. It, but I've taken a lot of it down and put more PC stuff up. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's true. And I mean, you have a lot of cards too, so you have a lot of cards and stored away as well. Yes, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So you got both. Um, I think I would have a dedicated room. Like, uh, you know, I have it, I have a kind of a walk-in closet and two of those shelves I have my best cards in and it's kind of like, like you, like it's, it's private, you know, because they are more higher value, but you know, every time I go to the ensuite, I, I walk, I, you know, I slow down, check out my cards and then I just keep walking. (laughs) (laughs) I think everybody does. I think you can't not like just stop and just like (laughs) look. I love just uh, admiring it every once in a while. And then, you know, like like that, we have a downstairs in the main living room where there's the built-in. And I just, you know, display my son's Pokemon cards. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I have a Derek Jeter. Uh, same, same, kind of like you. Like the more, you know, sentimental ones uh, are the ones that are might be lower in value. So I have a Derek Jeter Tops Gold rookie card. That's a yeah. PSA 8 worth 50 bucks. But, right. you know, I gave that to my groomsmen when I got married, each one of them. So oh, it kind of has yeah. that meaning right? right so i like to show that off yeah so I'm, I'm the same way as you but i like to show it off too so um all right that's our uh would you rather segment we'll do uh we'll do this again um in a future episode let's end off this show with our regular weekly segment we call pick one so it's kind of like would you rather but we specifically choose two cards or two players and then we debate which one we would rather invest in all right so hyung do you want to start things off for us sure thing i'm gonna I'm going to switch it up today because, you know, I did some digging uh, last episode, mm-hmm. last Friday episode with the, with the hockey talk with Young Guns. And I genuinely yeah. wanted to uh, kind of see what you guys would pick. So you have Young Guns, PSA 10s, um, of Sidney Crosby selling at 2500 bucks. Mm-hmm. It has a pop count of, I think, just over 1000 bucks. Would you rather a pop, th- count? pop count? Yeah. Would yes. you rather invest in a lower pop Sidney Crosby PSA 10? Because obviously, I think Sidney Crosby is a top five all time. Mm-hmm. Um, he, depending on where you see McDavid, McDavid, what he's doing is pretty incredible too. So he could potentially, you know, be up there 
uh, within those best five. But even that's a top, like a pretty big uh, thing that McDavid still has to do. So McDavid's PSA 10 is double the pop count. So 2,500 or so. Uh, it's selling at 3,000, right? Who would you invest in if, you know, you're going to invest in a young guns goat type player, a generational type player? Do you go with the current McDavid or, you know, because I, I think Crosby's severely undervalued in my opinion, like severely compared to Ovechkin and stuff. Like to me, mm-hmm. it's a no brainer. Right. You know, Ovechkin's price because of last year, we're up to like 6K and still his young guns now is still trading at 3,800 or so. Which I think, yeah. compared to Sidney Crosby, I'm I'm picking, I'm picking Sidney Crosby over Ovechkin for sure. But would you guys do that over the McDavid or the McDavid over Ovechkin? Or sorry, McDavid over mm. the Crosby. Crosby, yeah. right? Crosby, yeah. I know what John says. Um, yeah, my answer definitely is a Crosby, it, and it's you know I'm actually trying to get a Crosby right oh, now. Nice. I'm not actively searching, but um, I would love if I could trade into, uh, again, you guys know I'm trying to hopefully land an SP Authentic at some point in the next 12 to 18 months, if it could happen. Um, yeah, I think the time to move on a Crosby is is now. I think that Pittsburgh is, is I don't know if they're in a playoff scenario. Um, they're not doing too well, so I think his his prices will be suppressed for a little bit, but in the next 24 months when you know you're you're sort of seeing the uh the swan song and people celebrating Crosby's career it's going to start start getting getting up there so i think the time to move is now and crosby is like for us we've watched his entire career this guy is uh, he has accomplished everything captain canada the first time we saw uh you know olympics and he sco- scores the golden goal like all of that stuff just i think even for any hockey any canadian hockey collector like Crosby is very meaningful probably to you know those years that you watch hockey so for sure yeah Crosby for me for sure yeah um I'm gonna go McDavid because I feel like McDavid's definitely a generational talent and despite the the higher pop count I feel like hockey has room to grow in the states especially like in terms of viewership and and I think if it does, McDavid's going to be one of those central players that people are going to flock to. So for investment purposes, I think there's a better chance for the McDavid young guns, despite the higher pop, to increase in value over time. And, and you know, like, it doesn't surprise me, to tell you the truth, that even Ovechkin young guns cost are valued more than Crosby because, you know, um, Ovechkin's just louder in general over his playing career. And, and Crosby's like, you know, your modest Canadian. He's your Larry Walker. Down. He's your Larry Walker <laughs> yeah. of hockey. Hardworking, exactly, right? Team player. Like, I love all that about Crosby more than any of the other players we've mentioned, right? So, um, you know, if I was just a collector and not looking to flip, I would just get the Crosby personally. Uh, but if I'm looking for investment purposes, I'm I'm going to double down on McDavid. Mm. By the way, um, based on the, the card price history, I mean, you know, I didn't follow it as closely as maybe somebody like Jeremy Lee, like, mm. a, you know, he would be the real pro to this. Yeah. But Crosby, from what I remember, Crosby's rookie card, almost this entire career has been worth double Ovechkin's. It wasn't until 2021 when COVID happened and sports cars started popping off that people start to look at sports cars and then... You know, coincidentally, Ovechkin gets is creeping close to Gretzky's record, and then finally, Ovechkin's cards mm. cards start to overtake Crosby's. But Crosby was always worth a lot. Really, more okay. than Ovechkin. Oh, I think yeah. I remember uh, that sure. when when I was Stand corrected yeah, getting back into the hobby, I, I seen that and I was mm-hmm. like, and then it kind of s- swapped, right? So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm. This is tough for me because I. This would be a real life situation where you know, for the right price, I would definitely want a McDavid. I think three thousand still a little pricey. I think I think Crosby, on the other hand, because of the low pop count, I think 
you know, realistically could potentially not be that price again anytime. I don't know when that time is, but I think there's going to be a time where you can't buy for 2500 anymore. Um, and just because based on the pop count and the people that do uh, hold Crosby's uh, think the same thing. It's more of a long-term hold for them. You know, they they kind of believe uh, that he's he's one of the top five players of all time. And having a pop count, even of a thousand, that's not, not bad. It's like if you hold a LeBron or Curry, you know, a rookie card that only has like a refractor with a pop count that's, that's lower, you know, you, that's going to hold value over long, long term. And I think McDavid, there's just a lot more out there. And to me, I think McDavid's going to surpass. Crosby and points and you know the numbers are going to definitely be there for him to have consideration of just just being an like amazing scorer and you know playmaker and Gretzky type player right so but like I said McDavid's still young like he has a long career ahead of him I think there's gonna be buying opportunities in the future as well uh but I I think that time with Crosby is kind of coming more to an end so and I like the price point the low pop count so if it were today, I would actually buy the Crosby over. Oh wow! Okay. Over the McDavid, but I do want a McDavid as well. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just let, putting it out there. <laughs> you think you think you think McDavid's going to win a cup? Just uh, <clears throat> quick. I think so. Side question. I think so. I think he's too I good. Think so I think it's I just think so. the, the, um, surrounding him with the right right people. Yeah. Um, He's just, he's ready. He's ready. Like every line he plays on, he scores, they win. So it's like, it's a matter of being in the right place at the right time. Yep. I do too. So that's why I'm in on McDavid. (laughs) My point exactly. (laughs) Yeah. You're not, you're not wrong for sure. All right. Good one. All right. We're going to, we're going to stick, we're going to stick with hockey. Mm -hmm. Um, bit of an old news cycle, but you guys know the, um, the 1979 OPG. Sealed yes. case that sold for three point seven million. Mm-hmm. So the one v one is that case at three point seven five million, yeah. or a nineteen seventy nine Opeachy Gretzky PSA ten, which last sold for three point seven five million. That's a pop two. Would you rather take the single? That's a pop two. The PSA ten, yeah. PSA ten. So. For you know, let, let's not even call it three point seven five minutes. Just if you had one or the other, which one? Are you, which one are you taking? The PSA ten Gretzky at pop two, or are you taking that entire case? Okay. And I think just just for some context, I think people were saying uh, you could get around thirty Gretzky rookies from that box or from that case. Mm, okay, that's good to know. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go for the PSA ten. I think I think PSA has got locked down. They're like, no, we can't we can't let any more PSA tens. I think we yeah. there is under pop control. Um, it's one of those cards, one of those few cards that's going to always be under pop control. Um, so especially a PSA two, like you know, when you open, you know, there's going to be um, miscuts cuts or off center cuts anyways, right? So out of the thirty, let's say half of them are just definitely not a ten, right? Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they there was zero PSA tens out of that case. So I'm gonna go for the sure thing, get the PSA ten, and uh, I would love to have that card. Yeah, like PS or Pop two. That's that's all. Me and Clark will have it, one each. <laughs> I mean, John, you're gonna have to take the case. <laughs> no, Good luck. But Good luck, uh, John. yeah, no, I mean, I I I like the case, like. I, I do like that because it's it's the illusion of well what's in there and it's only yeah. the only known Great. case left so I, like you gotta you got you Pretty gotta much. just leave it untouched for the rest of life right like just to <laughs> do the sports card yeah. justice like that belongs in a museum um, mm. kind of like that so it's like it's close I get the allure but like the pop too it's like if you had a if you had the mantle. 52 one of those psc 10s you know that would be a grill gretzky pop 2 would be the same thing right yeah. so for me it's it's like it's different than the jordan psc 10 this is pop 2 gretzky opg super super hard to gem like impossible 
So likely let, it's it, not. There's no ten in there, anyways. Yeah. yeah. Let's and let's be honest. The tens that are out there, the two. Eh. Oh, very questionable. <laughs> yes. yeah, very so, questionable. That's what I'm saying. I've seen I've seen like PSA eight Gretzky's that look yeah. amazing. There's yeah, better like, buys perfect. out there, definitely. But it's not, it's under pop control. It's, yeah. it's registered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll, I'll bet you whoever bought that case was had 3.75 million ready for the PSA 10 Gretzky. He just couldn't get it, you know. I, I'm sure Gretzky owns Gretzky himself probably owns one of them and maybe Dustin Johnson owns the other. <laughs> right. So this guy's like, I'm never gonna get my hands on this. So this is the next best, best thing with my money. I'm I'm going all in. Yeah. So I'm sure it was something like that. It's not a bad investment. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with That's a good story. No, I, I think it's probably probably the exact truthfully investment wise, probably the exact same thing. If anything, yeah, like you're right. Both both pieces in terms of hockey, sports card memorabilia space. Yeah, these these are like Grail, belong in hall, you know, museum type of of cards, right? So, or products. But I'm with you guys. I mean, we're collectors first and foremost for the most part. So PSA 10 Gretzky, you know, like I we mentioned this before, and any old hockey collector knows anything sort of like pre 1982. Those P O P G cutters were like with butter knives. Like you're, <laughs> yeah. they're brutal. Yeah. So even if you get thirty Gretzky's, uh, you have like zero. There's like zero percent chance they're coming out PSA tens, right? And again, the fact that that's a great point that you mentioned. You know, PSA is gonna heavily scrutinize yeah. <laughs> those cards. Yeah. Like I'm sure if you cracked open those PSA tens and you sent them to PSA, they they're not getting tens. Like those tens themselves, they're not getting tens. Yeah. So there's no way the ones in these boxes are getting ten. So I'm, and you know what? To be honest, you don't know what condition they're in. I remember watching. Um, oh, somebody was breaking open a box of like 1950 or like 1958 tops or some really really old product. Ted going for Ted Williams or something like that. Bought the box for super expensive. It was in a break actually, so everybody spent you know whatever they spent thousand dollars each, and he starts ripping open the packs, and they were like. They're like melted because I think it was in an <laughs> attic. It, it, it was like there was so much mo- so much moisture. It didn't actually like it, it wasn't wet, yeah. but just like the, the the change in moisture over all those years sitting in an attic, cold, hot, cold, hot. Man, those cards were like melted together. So you do you, you again? That's another thing. You, you never don't know, know what condition these cards are in. You know, it, it also might be like uh, Logan Paul and there are a bunch of GI Joe cards in there. Who <laughs> you know who knows. <laughs> Too much risk. Yeah. Too much risk for three point seven yeah, million. PSA, PSA ten. Yeah. PSA ten sweep. All right, good one. Okay, I'm gonna. I knew you guys were gonna do hockey. That's why I'm like, I'm not gonna choose a hockey for uh, my pick <laughs> one. <laughs> so um, it's it's baseball because you know it's March, spring training, getting excited. You know about baseball coming around the corner. Prospecting's a big thing, so I chose a couple of prospect rookie. Uh, players. One is Jackson Churio. Remember Jackson Churio? I oh, yeah. Talked about him in a while. Um, his 2022 Bowman Chrome, first Bowman Refractor Auto, number to 499, PSA 10, sold for almost 1400 Okay. Mm-hmm. On the other side, again, Bowman Chrome, Refractor Auto, number to 499, but it's 2020 of Jason Dominguez, PSA 10. Sold for just over fourteen hundred. So let's say fourteen hundred even. You got to pick one of these refractor autos, both numbered to four ninety nine. Same both price. Both rated PSA ten. It's about the same price, around fourteen hundred. Which one are you choosing? I'll go first. I I think Jackson Churio is a more toolsy guy, to be honest. Um, I like his upside more than uh, Dominguez. Although I do believe in Dominguez's ability, I think he's going to be a phenomenal player. Um, I like. Just Churio's frame, what he brings to the table. And I think he's going to be, like I said, a, a Ronald Acuna type player. Uh, maybe not mm. as not as um, strong defensively in the outfield, but everything else. His running game is spectacular. The power potential's there. The hitting ability's there. Very toolsy guy. Uh, and I think he's going to be... I wish he played for a different team, though. But I think right. Brewers... Brewers are going to be good this year, uh, even though they lost, you know, Corbin Burns. Uh, they got guys like Jackson Churio and our boy Tyler Black. I think he's going to be an impactful player in the big leagues as well. He's a Canadian kid I coached, so he might be. I thought you were about to say our, our boy Kessie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
I'm, I'm rooting for Keston as well. Um, <laughs> to, to make a comeback. I mean, he I still could hit. Keston could still I hope he hit. Signs, I hope yeah. he signs somewhere. I hope he rakes. Did he sign no, somewhere? I don't think so. By the so. way, sorry, we're getting off track. Yeah, we're talking about <laughs> Keston again here in 2023. <laughs> Will, it, will, will his PSA tens go up? <laughs> We're just hoping because we have a ton of them. <laughs> John just wants to take it off uh, his Christmas tree and actually try to sell it one day. <laughs> <laughs> he had a good, really good season last year. Uh, just saying, he he, he, he did. hit three eleven with twenty three bombs. Signing somewhere, yeah, that's pretty good. Three, I think Jay's could use him. Bombs. Come on, Jays. <laughs> Come on, Jays. <laughs> yeah, Jays got to sign Joey Votto first. Come on. Yeah, Votto first. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. All right. Anyway. <laughs> okay. I, um, you know, I obviously lean on Young to learn about these prospects. And when we were speaking, you know, went back at, back when Cheerios cards first came out, obviously Young was speaking very highly of him. And I think you kind of start to get the consensus, right? Even as he spoke, right, Young spoke right now, Churio looks like a more complete package, uh, you know, percentage to stay in the league, percentage to become an all-star in the league, a way higher percentage, whereas Jason Dominguez has that raw home run, you know, like he could be a nothing. He could also turn into like Aaron Judge 2.0. Like he's got that kind of volatile ability potential. So, um I see the lure in Jason Dominguez, but I can't, you know, based on what Young is saying, I can't go away from Jackson Cheerio. Like I, the the safe pick, the one that you know. And these days, you know, it. I actually no, I, I take that. I was about to say it's not all, all all about the home run, but I feel like it still is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I feel like Jackson Cheerio, you know, and and Brewers aren't up and up. Still, you know, they're not. Um, a nationally follow team or anything like that, but I, I think there's a. Yeah, I, I, that the safe pick for me is Cheerio. It's an easy one for me. Mm. All right, I'm gonna roll the dice with Jason Dominguez. Really interesting. You know, I know, I know, I know he's rehabbing. Um, he should be back in June or July, but I don't know. I, I still maybe I overvalue this factor. But playing for the Yankees, you know, if he does well, you just have a lot more eyes on you, right? And then, and that that includes both in baseball and the baseball card world you know so uh, i was just looking at some of the trends jason dominguez and this is during the hobby hype too but it went as high as almost five thousand at one point right in in may of 2021 and it's gone down to 1400 so uh, you know even if it goes half that if he does well starts starts hitting homers plays next to judge in the outfield i think you know and then that could be like a great pairing i don't know it's risky Right, but then I also think investing in a 19-year-old is risky too. <laughs> With you know Jackson Cherry, you got to remember he's still a teenager, which is crazy. So risk involved in both sides. So I'm gonna go play for the go bet on the 21-year-old versus a 19-year-old, both super young guys. But and he plays for the Yankees, so that's gonna be my tipping point there. All right, another great episode, another great show. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, We'll have a brand new show for you next week. And uh, yeah, can't wait to uh, see you then. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to Cards to the Moon. We'd really appreciate you subscribing to our podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. And you can also connect with each of us on Instagram at 5cardguys, or you can follow Hyung at Integrity Sports Cards, or John at Trade You at Recess. You can also check us out at 5cardguys.com. Thanks again and hope to connect soon.